Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It's Tuesday, January 18th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would stand for that, please. And then we'll follow it up with the invocation by Dr. Rick Janelle, lead teaching minister at the Bellevue Church of Christ at 2311 Madison Street. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and Let's pray. Our God and Father, we thank you for all the ways that you've blessed us. We thank you for our great country. Thank you for the community that we live in. Thank you for all who serve the citizens of this area, including our first responders, our medical staff. And uh, Father, we pray that you would uh, help the decisions that are made tonight to be made with uh, the thoughts of our citizens in mind, what's best for our communities. We pray that wisdom and good judgment would, uh, would be well seen. We thank you, Father, for those who do serve. Thank you for the, uh, the times that uh, it's difficult to do the right thing. And yet, Father, we pray for strength and for courage. We pray for our country. We pray for the difficult times that we're in. We pray for the leaders of the world that uh, peace might reign. And Father, in all things, we pray that uh, your will would be done, especially in our own lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Dr. Janelle. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Susan, would you take roll call, please? Councilman Stenson. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman McCaw. Here. Councilman Chrysler. Here. Councilman Burns. Here. And Councilwoman Welch. Here. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. Item five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims, and advisory committee reports. 5A, approval of the agenda. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Cooks, second by Stinson. Mayor, I'd like to make an amendment. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda and move item 15A to right before 11A. 15A right before 11A. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch to amend the agenda to move item 15A to right before 11A. Any comments or questions? Please vote on the amendment. All voting yes, motion carries. Motion by Cook, second by Stenson to approve the agenda as amended now. Are there any comments or questions? Please vote. I did this once. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where this item is unless otherwise removed. And do I have a motion? Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Stenson, second by Burns. Any comments or questions on the consent agenda? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item seven, special presentations, we have none. Item eight, organizational matters, there are none. Number nine, approved citizen communication, we have, we've not received any. Item 10, we have no liquor licenses this evening. So that takes us to 15A per amended agenda. Resolution number 2021-53, request to approve the Jefferson Place redevelopment plan for lots one through six 
and part of lots 7 through 11A lying south and west of Harvell Drive, Block 170, Bellevue, together with adjacent vacated streets, avenues, and alleys. Applicant is Mercury Property Management, Inc., general location, 16th Avenue and Jefferson Street. And do I have a motion? Councilman Burns? Oh, yeah, Councilman Cook, sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve resolution 2021-53. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Yes, may I? Yes, Bree. Tammy, can you just confirm that the redevelopment plan pursuant to resolution 2021-53 is in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan? Yes, currently that property is shown as medium density residential in the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Um, per section 5.13.01 of our zoning ordinance, RG28 is defined as a medium density development. That is the change of zoning that the applicant is requesting. So yes, it is in conformance. Okay, we have a motion by Cook, second by Walsh. Any comments or questions? Councilman Stenson. Just want to say, uh, I was contacted by Jeff from Mercury, kind of to be a liaison between uh, Mercury and the neighborhood. Uh, he's agreed to a few things to uh, try to make this a little better development between the neighborhood and Mercury as far as putting in trees along the south side and also getting the Humane Society to go in there and remove any animals that they find and relocate them. There's also a couple other agreements that he had with a private uh, homeowner in reference to a sidewalk and stuff. Uh, I just want to say I think Jeff has put forth good effort to try to make this a doable situation with the neighborhood and uh, Mercury development. And with him doing that, I was against it at one time, but with him coming forward like that, I will be voting in favor of this tonight. Okay, any comments or questions? Oh. Councilman Burns? Yeah, I have a few comments. And <clears throat> I'd just like to speak to the neighbors that may be watching this at home. I know you're frustrated and I'm frustrated too. Um, what I can tell you is, is that I've been going through neighborhoods and I can tell you that people are paying attention um, and people do hear you. Um, and I, speaking to my colleagues, I think that the path of least resistance is to convince ourselves that nothing is wrong with this. Um, I know a lot of citizens that I've spoken to are not confident in that. I'm not either. Um, I'm going to vote on the, no on this, and I'm also going to vote no on the rezoning. Thank you. Any more comments or questions? Councilman Preister. I, I want to uh, thank Councilman Stinson for all of his work. I really am glad that a lot of the negotiations took place, that he contacted many of the people. I think others of us all spoke to some of those neighbors. And I think the negotiating that you did and trying to get some things resolved in their interest is certainly helpful. So thank you for that. And I do appreciate the, the work by Mercury Development, too, and being willing to make some concessions. Uh, I, too, was not in support of this before, but had there been no concessions, I definitely wouldn't have voted for it. But by will it, being willing to work with it I, and the neighbors and, and make some concessions, that was very helpful to me. I also think that the, lost my train of thought. 
Don't know what it was. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You got the next item if you remember. You can. <laughs> well, I do that all the time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Tammy. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to point out, so um, what's on the agenda tonight for City Council is approval of a specific redevelopment plan that includes a site plan and a specific site plan in a later um, item on the agenda. So. If there was some agreements made with the neighbors, unless those are reflected in a site plan that we have and that you guys are voting on, that would be something between the developer and the neighbors. Um, city staff, the planning department, public works department, whomever is going to make sure the developer adheres to the site plan you guys have this evening, unless it's amended in some way. Any other comments or questions? All right, you have a motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. Uh, please vote. We have four voting yes, two voting no, with Councilman Preister and Councilman Burns voting no. Okay, item 11, ordinances for adoption, third reading. Item 11A, ordinance number 4068, an ordinance to request to rezone lots one through 10 and outlot A, Jefferson Place Edition, being a replat of lots one through six and parts of lots seven through 11A, lying south and west of Harvell Drive, block 170, Bellevue, together with the adjacent vacated streets, avenues, and alleys from RD60 OTO, to RG 28 PS with site plan approval for the purpose of multifamily residential development, applicant Mercury Property Management Inc. General Location, 16th Avenue and Jefferson Street. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4068, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance number 3619 by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 16th Avenue and Jefferson Street, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. Do I have a motion? <clears throat> Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve ordinance number 4068. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. Any comments or questions? Brie? Tammy, I'll ask you the same question. Um, is ordinance 4068 in the rezoning in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan? Yes, it is. Um, per section 5.13.01, um, RG28 is defined as medium density development, which is shown in our future land use map as such for this property. Okay, any further comments or questions? Okay, please vote. I have four yes votes and two no votes with Councilman Preister and Councilman Burns voting no. Thank you. Item 11A1, request to small subdivision plat lots one through 10 and outlot A, Jefferson Place Edition. And I'll take a motion for that. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve item 11A1. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll take a vote. And I have four yes votes and two no votes with Councilman Preister and Councilman, Councilman Burns voting no. Thank you. Item 11B, ordinance number 4069, an ordinance amending and adding a section to article seven, chapter 12, Bellevue Municipal Code regarding outdoor fireplace permitting requirements. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4069, an ordinance to amend Article 7, Chapter 12 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by amending Section 12-172 and adding 
new section 12-176 regarding outdoor fireplace permitting requirements and to provide an effective date. And Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we table ordinance 4069 and we move it to February 1st, 2022, which would be our next meeting. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch to table item 11B, ordinance number 4069 to the February 1st, 2022 meeting. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 11C, ordinance number 4070, an ordinance to approve the sale and conveyance of approximately 24.85 acres of property to Redwood USA LLC. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4070, an ordinance to approve the sale and conveyance of approximately 24.85 acres of city property to Redwood USA LLC, an Ohio limited liability company. Okay, do I have a motion? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we approve ordinance number 4070. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Stenson. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 12, ordinances for public hearing, second reading, 12A, ordinance number 4067, an ordinance to amend the municipal code regarding disturbing the peace. Uh, Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4067, an ordinance to amend section 20-9 of the Bellevue Municipal Code pertaining to disturbing the peace to repeal all previous versions of the same and to provide an effective date of this ordinance. Thank you, and I will open uh, 12A up for public hearing. And if there's anybody here to speak, please come forward, state your name and address and sign in and you'll have five minutes. Hi, Brian Hansen, 2704 Georgia Avenue. And I'm in favor of this ordinance, but I'm not in favor of uh, truncating the required readings and stuff unless there's a real reason for that to occur. And since this is also the first chance for me to speak uh, publicly, I have a separate but related issue to it. Uh, the last council meeting, y'all passed, on the 21st of December, you passed Ordinance 4066, which established our new boundaries, our six wards, and that went into effect on the 5th of January, as the ordinance stated 15 days afterwards. So I'm confused tonight with Mr. McCaw, nothing personal against him, but I'm confused tonight. Uh, we, as of the, the 5th of January, we have six wards and one of them's open. So I would contend, and again, nothing personal with Mr. McCaw, I would contend his seating on the council tonight and his votes are not in accordance with the ordinance and should be therefore set aside and steps should be taken to fill that six board seat because uh, I guess nine two was repealed entirely. There was no provision to carry over the at large council position the way I read the, the minutes, et cetera. So that's all I have on that. But I would, I would advocate that 4066 is in effect as of the 5th of January and you have an open council seat to fill. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to try to answer that without conferring to our legal, but is there anyone else? And we'll go through the public hearing. Is there anyone else uh, wanting to speak regarding 12A? Please come forward. Anyone else regarding 12A? Please come forward. Seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing, and I would ask uh, Bree to respond. I'm not going to address the specific item because it's not on the agenda tonight. Um, so it wasn't open, open for public co comments, but I'm comfortable with proceeding with Mr. McCaw voting um, until the next election. Okay. 
Any other comments? Um, Bree, are we going to address waiving the third reading? Because that was another question he asked. Pursuant to statute, you don't have to have like a for cause to waive a third reading. Um, it's within the city council's right to waive the third reading um, on any item other than like boundaries of wards and annexations. There's a couple limitations, um, but you don't have to have like a reason to waive. Um, staff is asking that you waive it in this case um, because there are some things in the disturbing the peace um, ordinance that's currently on the books um, that we don't really want to keep enforcing for various reasons. Um, so we want to get it in place <laughs> so that it can be effective sooner than later. Our officers can train on it um, and move forward with um, a more solid disturbing the peace ordinance. You good with that, Chief? Okay, Councilman right. Cook? Do we make a motion first to approve the, uh, the uh, suspend? Third? Suspend. You'll have to have a motion to suspend the rules and waive the third reading and vote tonight. And so you would vote on that. And then if that's approved, then you would vote on the ordinance tonight. I'll make that motion, but I'd like to make a comment first to uh, um, Mr. Hansen. Normally, we don't like doing this, but I think in this particular case, I'm a former police officer. The gentleman sitting to my right is a police officer. I can tell you my life before this disturbing disorderly conduct was a very popular charge that was probably made arrest made every day where I where I did my law enforcement I think it's critical to get this on the book so it can be properly used by the officers on the street so we're changing the law because we think it's there might be some issues to maybe defend it if we would go well I, I should say we're making changes that we think are appropriate for the officers to make an arrest for this charge, and it's a tool they can use every day, so let's get it on the books as quick as possible. So I'm gonna support this, and I'm gonna make a motion that we suspend the rules, waive the third reading, have public hearing tonight, which we did have, are having, and vote on it tonight. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch to uh, suspend the rules and waive the third reading and vote tonight on 12A. Any comments or questions on that? All right, please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, now uh, motion passed to suspend the rules so we will uh, take a motion to approve ordinance number 4067. We already did that. We did? No. Mm -mm. I'll make a motion we approve ordinance 4067. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 12B, ordinance number 4071, an ordinance to amend agenda section 2-29 of city code to allow for amending of the agenda as allowed by Nebraska law outlined in Nebraska revised statute 84-1411. Susan, would you read that ordinance please? Ordinance number 4071, an ordinance to amend section 2-29 of the Bellevue Municipal Code pertaining to agenda, submission of materials, formulation, public availability, etc., to repeal all previous versions of the same and to provide an effective date of this ordinance. Thank you, and I will open a public hearing um, for ordinance number 12 or item number 12B, ordinance number 4071. Is there anyone here to speak regarding this ordinance? Please come forward. Anyone here to speak on 12B? Please come forward. Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing, and the third reading will be February 1st, 2022, at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Item 13, ordinances for introduction, first reading. 13A, ordinance number 4072, request to rezone lot three LGB properties, replat one from RE to RS 120 for the purpose of existing residential development 
Applicant, AMZ Investments, LLC, General Location, 13510 South 36th Street. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4072, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the City of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 13510 South 36th Street, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance, and to provide an effective date. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be February 1, 2022 at 6 p.m. <clears throat> Item 13B, ordinance number 4073, request to rezone lots 1 and 2, here and there, addition, being a replat of tax lot 6B, and that part of tax lot 6A2 being the north 50 feet of the west 175 feet of the east 260 feet of tax lot 6A together with the south 15 feet of the east 110 feet of lot 1 and the south 22 feet of the east 85 feet of the east 260 feet of tax lot 6A together with the south 15 feet of the east 65 feet of lot 34. Svoboda's so addition to the city of Bellevue all located in the southwest quarter of section 36 township 14 north range 13 east of the 6th p.m. Sarpy County, Nebraska from RG 8M and BGM to BGM for the purpose of residential and commercial development. Applicant First City Development, LLC, general location 2304 Lincoln Road. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4073, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance Number 3619 by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 2304 Lincoln Road, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. Second reading and public hearing will be February 1st, 2022 at 6 p.m. here in the Council Chambers. Item 13C, ordinance number 4074, request to rezone tax lot 6A6, located in the northwest quarter of section 26, township 14 north, and range 13 east of the 6th p.m., Sarpy County, Nebraska, from BG to RG20 for the purpose of an adolescent care facility. Applicant I3, LLC, general location 105, Fort Crook Road, South, um, Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4074, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 105 Fort Kirk Road South, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. Second reading and public hearing will be February 1, 2022 at 6 p.m. here at the Council Chambers. Item 13D, Ordinance Number 4075, repealing Section 20-2 of City Code regarding sale of cigarettes, tobacco, etc. products to minors. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance Number 4075, an ordinance to repeal Section 20-2 of Article 1, Chapter 20, of the Bellevue Municipal Code regarding furnishing cigarettes, tobacco, et cetera, to minors and to provide an effective date. Thank you. Second reading public hearing will be February 1, 2022 at 6 p.m. Uh, we have no public hearings on matters other than ordinances this evening. Item 15B, resolution number 2022-01, resolution to amend the master fee schedule regarding certain planning department fees and cemetery fees and authorize the mayor to sign. Do I have a motion? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 2022-01. Second. Motion by Welch, second by McCaw. Any comments or questions? 
Please vote. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 15C, resolution number 2022-02, an emergency resolution regarding implementation of a pandemic sick leave policy. Uh, do I have a motion there? Councilman Burns. Thank you. I move that we approve resolution number 2022-02. Second. Motion by Burns. Seconded by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Oh. Okay. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16, current business. 16C, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the deed of reconveyance and sub substitution of trustee for 2008 Calhoun Street in an amount not to exceed $5,069.02. And do I have a motion? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve item 16C. I'll second that. Second by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16D, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the community development block grant subrecipient agreement with the Housing Foundation for Sarpy County in an amount not to exceed $150,000. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve 16D. I'll second that. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16E, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the closure and removal agreement with Union Pacific Railroad for the city of Bellevue Schilling Drive, 9th Street to 13th Street, bridge removal project in an amount not to exceed $55,000. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16E. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Burns. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, 16F, approve and authorize mayor to sign the agreement with Felberg, Holt, and Ulevig for the Galvin Road and Birchcrest intersection improvements project in an amount not to exceed $58,100. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16F. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Cook. Comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, 16G, approve and authorize the mayor to sign amendment number two with Jacob in, Jacobs Engineering Group, Inc. for the storm drainage project in an amount not to exceed $51,458. We have a motion. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion, we approve 16G. Second. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16H, recommendation to approve and authorize mayor to sign amendment number one to agreement for engineering services for American Heroes Park and Hayworth Park wastewater system in an amount not to exceed $91,700. Motion please. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve 16H. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Councilman Cook. I was just wondering if Mr. Albert could fill us in on this project and, and where this is heading. Um, so Bellevue University has been working on this for a few months about potentially putting their soccer field and softball 
uh, filled down at uh, Hayworth Park. When we started looking at that, we learned that it doesn't have the sewer capacity uh, currently to handle what they want to do. Um, about the same time frame, uh, in talking to Doug at Public Works, uh, we wanted to do some improvements on the other side of the, uh, the highway at American Heroes, which also requires some improvements. It all runs the same lift station. Uh, collectively and working with him and Parks Department, it made sense to do this all at the same time as opposed to coming back and trying to do it later. Um, and then that works into uh, Bellevue University's plan as well so that they can move forward with their operation. Um, Mary Hawkins from the university is here tonight. <clears throat> if you have questions for her, she has her letter of intent um, and a draft of what she uh, envisions down there. Uh, we will have an MOU forthcoming uh, what that partnership would look like in the future uh, between them and the city. Uh, but it really doesn't get off the ground unless we have the proper infrastructure to support uh, the locker rooms and the fields down there. So uh, that's the point in, in doing this now, um, along with the American Hero side. Okay. Uh, just, I don't know if anybody else would want to speak. <laughs> I would just like to make a comment, and you don't have to. I just want to make a comment. If you want to, we can open it up if you want someone. But I'd like to make a comment about the letter that we received from Mary Hawkins. Um, I, living in this community basically since the age of three, um, I, I'm sure glad. I know you've, I'd like to see all your sports to be able to play in our city. I guess that's the best way to put it. I know there's been movement around between, there's another field down there that was a soccer field. When my nephew went to Bellevue University, they played down at Hayworth Park. I know they played at Bellevue Soccer Club. I think they've gone into Omaha or maybe Papillion La Vista, baseball. I, I sure hope that someday, somehow, somewhere, we can get all your sports uh, teams, you know, just playing locally where I think it would maybe attract even some of the local people to come and watch. So I. What we got from you, Mrs. Hawkins, looks outstanding. I think it looks like a great project. I'd love to see it uh, go all the way. Um, I talked a little bit with Mr. Risto, and I, I sort of asked him that maybe we can go a little bit bigger on our sewer system because there might be a neighbor across the dike that might be able to use it or even future development down there. So that's something that can be addressed maybe, of course, we're proven a dollar amount tonight, but it's something that we may have to also think. But I'm, I'm glad you're doing it, and thank you very much. I'll, and I'll, not unless we open it up for public. I'll, input. I'll open it up for. I'll make a motion to open up to public input. I'll second that. Motion by Councilman Cook, second by Welch to open up item 16H for a public hearing. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Thank you. A Both public shooters. hearing is now open on 16H. So if you please come forward, state your name and address. And Mary Hawkins, um, 414 Greenbrier Court. But <clears throat> I brought the coaches because I think your point is really well taken. We have driven these teams all over the city and really appreciate the opportunity to be at Bellevue. The coaches can really tell you the, what this will mean to the athletes. It's huge. We're hoping to do a lot with it and not having locker rooms really makes it rough. <clears throat> no locker rooms, no restrooms, press box, but I would like to introduce Michaela and Mark because they just do a fa fabulous job for the city with uh, um, the teams that they bring in. And this will have an opportunity. <laughs> I've talked to Fred Yuhi for uh, more tourism and more activity and some, which we all like to hear, revenue generation for both the city and Bellevue for these fields. Michaela or Mark? Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for having us tonight. And uh, Mary Hawkins is right. I can't tell you, I do a lot of recruiting, not only locally, but California, Texas, New Mexico, you name it. And what's really fun right now is um, for the first time, gosh, I think I'm starting my 14th season here that I'll be able to host <laughs> our own softball camp in our own city of Bellevue at our own field. And it's really exciting. And the buzz that it's creating when I have um, my two other assistant coaches, I have a hitting coach and a pitching coach, and when they're out there saying, hey, we keep, we hear you getting a field, we hear you getting a field, I'm like, I think we're really close, but until I see the, the shovel in the, in the ground, but I'm really, really excited, and thank you so much for the opportunity. It's not only going to help um, 
our student athletes, but it's definitely going to um, create even more buzz with the youth in our community. So thank you. We're very excited, but I need you to state your name and address for the record. I'm really sorry. I'm, <laughs> nope, Ma I'm Michaela Cimino. Thanks. Thanks. Address. And out loud. <laughs> yep. Okay. 2914 Bar Harbor Drive, okay. Doug, Th Nebraska. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Thanks for the time. My name is Mark Heath Preston. Um, I'm the main soccer coach. A lot of the stuff Michaela says, um, obviously, I completely agree with, but... Um, being able to not drive 20 minutes to Papillion or 30 minutes to Omaha to host the games would be fantastic to have it here in town. Um, having li li lived on Hancock Street in Old Town Bellevue for a number of years um, and coaching youth soccer in Bellevue for the last 12 years, I think not only this will benefit our, our athletes, but also the local youth community that don't necessarily have to drive 20 minutes out to, to the middle of Omaha to go and train in the summer or the winter or wherever those places will be. So I think, of course, it will help us, but... I think for the community it'd be fantastic getting some more traffic down there and having the, the youth soccer players uh, in Bellevue being able to practice and train in Bellevue. Thank you. Yep. And your address, please. Uh, 4605 Brook Circle, Papillion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we're very excited to have you and uh, look forward to, to seeing more action here in Bellevue from Bellevue University. You guys have been great for Bellevue and we'll try to help you out. Councilman um, I am in support of this, but I just have a quick question. Because of, and Mark, maybe you or Doug can answer this. Um, this We found out about this, and we found out we needed to add a bigger, or put, there was no sewers, or is that what the issue was? Is that what I understand? Uh, currently down there, there is um, a tank uh, for the, the restrooms that are down there that is uh, <coughs> emptied every so often. Uh, that doesn't have anywhere near the capacity okay. um, for us to do what they want to do. Um, and it simply just makes sense to do okay. it lower. Understandably. My question is, because I was on the budget task force, is, was this a, a budgeted item that we anticipated something like this coming, or are we just moving different funds to... And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Just, I'm curious. To a degree. Um, we've always known we were going to build a wastewater system on the American hero side. We did not know uh, or understand the great development we're gonna get on the south side of mission. So this is a chance to combine them both and save money and resources as we put them together. Okay, perfect. And this is what this does. Thank you. Council, Council Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Maybe Doug or, or Mark, I'm, we know this is low, it's next to the river, and it does flood in the area, not as much up here, but could you, for the public, identify how we're protecting the investment? The construction of this system will be sealed and will be a low pressure system and help um, keep some of the infiltration out and all of the parts that can be built above the 100 year flood plain will be. And as um, my favorite employee, Epiphany, likes to say, it'll be wash and wear. <laughs> so whatever we can, whatever we can install to make it repairable after a flood goes through, all the electronics and moving parts will be either sealed or above the floodplain. Thank you. Is that helpful? Yeah. Good. You did just say your favorite employee in public, so. I just wanted to warn you that. Public hearing still open. Is there anyone here that would like to speak regarding 16H? Please come forward if there is. Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing. Um, I do have a motion from Cook, seconded by Welch, to approve 16H. Uh, any further comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16I, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the purchase agreement with Longo Drive LLC for the sale of 2206 Longo Drive and authorized payment to Ambassador Title Services, 311 Village Point Plaza, Suite 102, Omaha 68118 for the library renovation project in an amount not to exceed $3,450,000. And do I have a motion? Councilman Stenson. 
Make a motion we approve 16 I. Second. Motion by Stenson, seconded by McCaw. Any comments or questions from the council? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to open this up for public input. Okay. Second. Yep. Got a motion. Make I'll a make motion. that motion. Motion by Cook, seconded by Stenson to open up 16I for public hearing. So please vote. Is there any questions on that first? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, the public hearing is open on 16I. So if there's anyone in the public that would like to speak regarding 16I, please come forward. Mayor, city council members. Uh, I am Julie Dinville and I am the director of the Bellevue Public Library. And I would just uh, like to read a letter uh, that was crafted by our foundation, our library advisory board, our friends of the Bellevue Public Library, and myself um, in support of this measure. As you know, since uh, 2019, when we did our last feasibility study, we have been working towards another uh, direction to try to uh, create in a renovated or improved library and um, we think this is a good opportunity for us. So our letter says to the Bellevue City Council, as representatives of the Bellevue Public Library administrative staff, Bellevue Public Library Advisory Board, Bellevue Library Foundation, and friends of the Bellevue Public Library, we support the proposed purchase of the Bellevue Professional Center for the purpose of realizing a new library space. The project to renovate and or add on to the Bellevue Professional Center building will provide an updated infrastructure that the current library built in 1975 has lacked and will also provide for the opportunity to include services much desired in a new facility. These include, but are not limited to, quiet study rooms, a maker space, additional meeting spaces, defined children's and young adult areas, and a drive-through service point. In addition, there would be opportunities to create a fresh, engaging, flexible, and inviting space for our Bellevue community, where newer and better technological services can be provided while also maintaining our core services, such as programming, collections and informational services. There is much still to be determined through a design process, including the timing on renovation and relocation, but we believe that a worthwhile step forward for the library services in this community can be achieved through this action and the renovation addition project that would follow. We look forward to working with the city council, the mayor and city administration and our public works department um, to move forward with this project. And this letter um, that we presented to you tonight is signed by our board president, Deb Stortbett, Kathleen Crawford Rose, who's our vice president of the board and also the treasurer of the Friends of the Bellevue Public, Friends of the Bellevue Public Library, Claire Severn, our Friends of the Bellevue Public Library president, Guadalupe Mir, Bellevue Library Foundation treasurer, and myself. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for that letter. Thank you for all the work you've done over the years. I know uh, <laughs> you've had a lot of hopes uh, and you've had a lot of hopes broken, but I, I think this is a great opportunity for, for Bellevue and, and your library and your staff. So thank you. thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak regarding the library? I would just make a quick comment. Uh, I went on a tour with a council member Stetson and Councilwoman Welch, Mayor, Mr. Ristol, Doug Clark, representatives for the buyer, or I'm sorry, our representative as a buyer, representative for the seller, probably missing someone's name. Kathy had a friend, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this facility is gonna work great for what we're trying to do here. I 
truly wanted to keep our library. I know we're right on the boundary, but west of Fort Crook, west of 75, I think that's the, our population that probably needs it more. Um, going through that building, I was amazed at the what I thought was a very good shape that it was in with tenants in it, and the tenants will have options to stay or not to stay when their leases come up. That'll just have to be talked about at that time. But right now, there's available space for us to get this at least a movie. So it's not we're not waiting for a contract. There's space right now there that we can start moving forward on this. And I just hope we do a great facility that the city uh, is very proud of. Thank you. Still have the public hearing open. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak regarding the library? Please come forward. Seeing nobody, I'm going to close the public hearing. And uh, Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. Do we have any idea what the cost will be for refurbishing? We probably have some rough idea because right now we don't really know exactly what we're doing or how we're going to direct it. But any cost estimates on that? Yep. So let me maybe back you up a little bit on historical. When we shifted away from building a new facility, uh, we looked at remodeling our current library, and that went to almost $5.3 million from a $4 million original bid. So because of construction and supply chain issues, contractor shortages, along with that, and Mary Hawkins is here too, we were looking at a partnership to um, take a year and use uh, part of her space, and we would have had to renovate that space as well as pay for the move twice in and out. And that took it in excess of the 5.3. So it opened up, what do we do here? Uh, Doug actually went looking for a building to see if there was a more equitable place that we wouldn't would incur costs. And the purchase of this building came up. So we've, we've worked pretty steadily with uh, Leoy Daly on the renovation. And what we're looking at is probably short of a million. There's some things that we've got to redo. Um, but to give you a little histor historical perspective here, Right now, we're probably going to see about 450000 in revenue that will come from our tenants. Um, a couple of those are long-term leases. Some are short, but at minimum, um, out of a little bit short of 20,000 square feet out of 57,000, the balance is leased out. So our net revenue will be about four fifty, and then our expense to manage it is about two hundred. So we'll positively cash flow 250000 a year based on that we'll use that to satisfy our bond if we pull a bond on this which i think that'll be our next step and then allocate shy of a million dollars um, doug we should have our bids and our discussions as to what this is going to look like um, so probably maybe a, a, up to a million more uh, the library foundation has raised ninety thousand, i believe as part of their uh, commitment to this we also have a grant in front of the state for about 1.2 million 1.125, so which can go to the renovation of the building. So there's some other funds besides our funds that we'd like to utilize uh, to even lower ours. Um, we, in addition to that, um, if we move forward on this building, our intent is to sell our current library, and we have some negotiations going on with that, which will also reduce our uh, our expense for the remodel. So we'll apply that that purchase price towards our remodel. Um, just can't, we're not prepared to disclose who's negotiating with us, but I think it'd be a great entity in the public to take that building and repurpose it uh, for another public use. So um, short, long way around to answer your question, but um, our million, we think we'll be able to mitigate differently, so. Okay, and that million could be offset by the million point one grant application, because my next question was gonna be, any collaboration, any partnerships on it. But in this case, it could be the state and the grant that could be a partner. But are, are there any other groups that we're talking to, Bellevue University or anybody else, Metro? No, there were partnerships in the original feasibility study that right. were referenced that we would develop that. 50% of our funds were going to come from partnerships, um, along with a half-cent sales tax that was going to be looked at to pass to help fund it. Um, at that time, they thought that half cent sales tax would go to 10% of this building, and then 50% of it would come from private public partnerships. Um, we've taken two other outside agencies that do these type of public private partnerships. Right now, there is no indication that they will participate. 
hence we went after the state grant. Uh, so we don't see, besides our 90,000, Julie, that we've raised through the foundation, that's it. So there aren't, there aren't partnerships that are sitting on the table. Okay, but, but all I think combined, it would be within what we had budgeted and there could be some of that even offset. Yes, and if you take the positive cash flow of the building with our tenants, uh, that technically reduces what our purchase price. I mean, it'll it'll offset that. I think we're going to look to probably escalate that to a seven-year buyback uh, using our cash flow from the from the tenants. And then if we take phase two for another addition to it, it gets a little more complex for us of whether we add additional square feet or if one of our tenants who was on a month-to-month who indicated they wanted to stay another two years, we'd have another tenant we'd like to put into their place and then use their their leased area for our expansion so we don't have to renovate. But that gets a little sticky for us, so we're not, we're not there yet. But we, what we will do is, upon purchase, we'll start moving towards renovating the existing. So we currently have a 22,000 square foot library. Uh, within that library, you have mechanical rooms, some meeting rooms. The main floor that we have in this site is 17, three and then there's 2500 upstairs we could use the 2500 upstairs for storage or meeting rooms and then take our first floor for all public use i think doug i think our public use was 155 <coughs> in our existing library so in that 173 we would be able to accommodate immediately for our public use and then go to phase two after that okay the the last question that i, I think of now on the site map that we had in our packet, I just noticed it earlier before the meeting. It looks like a little section of the parking lot on the south end is not within it and that the property line comes right up against the door on the south side. I, I don't know if that's the accurate plan, but it just looked a little tight in that area. And I don't know if so That's our parking, um, when we looked at the building, I think according to our, our planning department, we'd have to have, I think, 3.5 parking spaces per occupant or uh, per square footage. We're at 4.4. So parking, we've got more than adequate, even if we renovate on top of that. But I'll double check on that proper. I think our property line goes because you have SAC or Cobalt that is on the far south side. And then there's a roadway between the two of us. Our property should be the one that's on the north side of that entryway. So I don't think their, their property is not going to butt right up to our front door. Right. It, the property line on, on that diagram uh, looks like it does run between the cobalt and that property. But then as it goes farther back, it does a little jog in there. That's, it just looked odd. I noticed it earlier. Not an issue. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman Welch. Well, and I want to just verify that the previous, we did a feasibility, or a, a feasibility study, if that's the correct word, for the library when we knew we wanted to do something. And the previous administration wanted to, wanted to make sure, the way they figured out how to fund it was to do a half a cent sales tax. And this project that we're doing, and I want to verify this is correct, this is with no burden to the taxpayers, correct? Correct. Okay. It's a you know, one of the other things I think it was mentioned here that was important to us, too, is the other library was going to be sited on the west, western side, so it'd be 36th Street in that area. Um, we felt, and I think Julie would support this, that the larger need is on the east side of 75, so we wanted to make sure that we still continue to serve that market. If we do this wisely and we do it with very little impact to the taxpayers, second phase would be to add an annex in the western side. And that would be our four to five year plan is to put an annex in Western Western Bellevue, not a full blown library, but something a little bit smaller, but making it more more accessible to our West Western city. Well, and I think that one of the things that we can do is just um, as this progresses, just put a lot of publicity out there and signage as to where the library is, because you make mention of this location and people are like, where? And so, but we can handle that with signage. But I. You know, when I saw the project, I thought this is a win-win because of the tenants being there to help pay off the bond, the location was good, the space felt good. I, I just, kudos to you, Doug Clark, for finding it. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Just, 
I'm glad that uh, uh, City Administrator Ristow did mention west of the uh, Fort Crook Road because certainly there are low-income folks there and this would move it a little bit closer to them so it's still pretty centrally located and and I like the whole concept of recycling an old building I mean we don't do that often this is an excellent example of that and a very successful project in refurbishing buildings that were largely empty and sitting for sale, this one, for years. So that one isn't sitting empty, and I'm glad the VA is using part of it. I've been there for that. I haven't seen the rest of the building other than the schematics, but I like the concept of reusing an existing building, and I think you can get it cheaper, and you can do a better job with it. So kudos to Doug for looking and finding one. Councilman Burns. I, I hear you guys. Um, here's my biggest concern, and I will, I will tell you that, for the record, I do support a library, and I support a brand new library, and, and a modern library. <clears throat> I served on the executive board that one originally looked at hiring Clark Anderson to come in and do a feasibility study, and my concern is, is that we just wasted taxpayer dollars to do a feasibility study that looked at 18 different sites, picked the top four, and this location didn't even make it in. My understanding is we're using that same feasibility study to get grant funding. So we're not going to listen to it, but we're going to utilize it to get grant funding. I don't, I don't, I don't understand the, the concept there. The other thing that, that's really concerning is, is that I think back in 2019 when Clark Anderson came and did their presentation. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the, the idea that a brand new library was going to cost $40 million, which also <clears throat> during the show um, that I did not get a script to at our last council meeting um, was also thrown out three times. And the, the concerning part about that is, is that information only came from one person, and that was Councilman Pat Shannon. I've also called Pat Shannon to ask him where he got that number because it, it, that sets, sets bells off in my head. Um, and he said he characterized that as an exaggeration. I also contacted Clark Anderson to get like a real estimate and they said between 15 and 20. Now, if we would have moved into phase two at that point, um, that cost could have come down based on um, conceptual design. I think that this is also a bad location and again, I support, and I want to see something happen, Julie. I support you 100%, and you work so hard, and you've been ad advocating for this. So by any means, but it's an isolated area. Think about the walkability. It's surrounded by a bank. Um, I can't remember the, the other building that's adjacent. Down the street, you have do it your, the DIY garage. You have a motel, and then behind it, you have apartment complexes. So when we talk about a broader vision and, and how does... I just think that it's worth investing in our community. The other thing about a sales tax is <clears throat> the only thing that I remember mentioned about any kind of um, that would have involved sales tax is the throwback tax credit, which I think already exists that the legislature created when they built the CHI Center in Omaha, um, which is essentially something a city applies for. And I think at that time they could have gotten $750,000 shut off the top of it. Um, I do know um, Bellevue University was approached at the time. Um, there were no commitments, um, but there was interest. And that was if we were looking at the Herman Drive, which is also a good location. And yes, that was privately owned property. Um, my concern is, is, is we just decided not to move forward because of a phantom number. That's really concerning too. Um, would we have been further along in this if we would have acted then? Um, and then the other thing is, is why would, why would we waste taxpayer dollars? Why would we have community engagement in a feasibility study? And they had community engagement. Now, the other understanding was is that if there needed to be a bond issue, and that's essentially what we do with capital improvement projects, we should be doing that. 
And that was only if, or if we had to get something passed, we already had community buy-in. So I think we've just kind of completely disregarded all of that. And that's where I stand at on this. And that's why I'm voting no, um, but I just think that we're missing the boat. I think a library is a source of civic pride. I think it's more than my cell phone. It's my, it's, it's the Bellevue Public Library. Um, and I think it's utilized for people at different stages in their life. And you're talking all ages. So I, I don't know. I'm not asking anybody to vote anyway. I'm just explaining why I'm voting no. Um, I think in the long run, this is a bad deal. And we're about to, to, sh to spend $3.4 million. And I understand that there are some benefits to a used building. I hear ya. But I think we're missing the boat. So in the uh, administration's defense um, and your statement regarding this council wasting, Councilman Burns' statement, that we're wasting taxpayer dollars. What I heard, we're not wasting a single taxpayer dollar, and we're getting a brand new library. I'm talking um, about a feasibility study. Why would we go through that? Why would we pay for that? Why would we hire a firm for that? Why would we get community input? That's what I mean. Well, I can tell you, this administration does not does not do studies and make plans and put them on a shelf. So. We're That's actually doing things, and I think we're doing it for the better of Bellevue. So I will leave it at that, but I just don't want you to sit here and say that we're wasting taxpayer dollars when this administration works daily mm -hmm. to save our taxpayers' money. And we've shown it with good fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. and I kind of take uh, insult to that. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for so, your comments. Um, I'll just respond quickly. Look, I'm not trying to insult anybody. Um, and I can't help it if you feel a defensiveness. I, I appreciate your concern and your comments. But I will say, why would we waste people's time through community engagement and spend money on a feasibility study? And then we pick a location that's not even included in the feasibility study. That's my point. And now it's 2022, and are we just doing things to do things? If we mess this up, we mess up for a generation. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to make a couple comments. You know, Council Member Preister referred to this building. There's a building right behind us that we repurposed. And look at this. We, you know, I came on, right? The buildings that we're in were purchased, but I came on the council when we did all the renovations, had those completed. And I, I think a library study, probably I did, did identify sites, but I don't know if it would have identified the site that was already developed. So it, if, I don't know how they, we would have led them to this site to say, is this a place to put a library when it was already developed? I mean, so I, I don't know how that would be in the top four. But, but we did talk about a half cent sales tax to build a library. We were talking, I, I, I don't remember exactly how it went, but I know that there was a figure of 40 million, but it was in 20 million. Well, we're not even close to 20 million. We're not close to 15 million. We got tenants that if it all goes, which we're taking a chance, but if it all goes well, the comment was made that we could use that rent money along with an additional 200,000 for the care and upkeep of that and possibly pay this down in seven years off a of rent toll from the tenants that we have there today. We don't know what's gonna happen when leases come due, if people will wanna stay or to go, but that's a chance we're taking. So there has been discussions of millions, let's just say millions of dollars for a library, possibility of a five cent sales tax there was discussion about to get our fire department to full strength of a restaurant tax, and we have not done that. That has not occurred, and we have a fire department. There was an article in the paper, our local paper, about we were fully staffed. We're, 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 we're increasing the numbers to the police department. There's no raise. We have not raised anybody's taxes. So let's talk about the good. The good is, we had an opportunity. 
this opportunity wasn't available when they did a feasibility study. We had an opportunity just by Doug going out and sticking his nose around town, I guess. I, I, I didn't know how he found it. <laughs> um, but the potential to increase the size of our library in this building is unbelievable. Um, the square footage in that building is unbelievable. And I just think, is that the best of the best? If I could, if I could have 20, 30, 40 million and, and then pick a site, okay, let's do it. But then we gotta pay for it, everybody in this room, if you live in Bellevue. This is a chance to repurpose a building, part of a building, and get a library up and running for less than what it, what it was gonna cost to add a little extension and renovation of our current library. I don't know, I, I'm supporting it. So, I think it's the right thing to do. And with it being empty, or the part that we want to start in being vacant, Doug can get bids, we can come back with a contract, and we can move forward on it. There was no $40 million figure that only came from one person and two people as of our last meeting. Where did that, uh, uh, there was a World Herald article that was just written last couple of weeks, wasn't there? Or W leader, the, the forty million dollar number was mentioned in. Was so that number has been floating out there, um, and if you look at it, so it's if there was a discussion of building a two story, fifty five thousand square foot library on the western flanks, um, at probably four to five hundred dollars a square foot right now, but back in that time probably been about three hundred commercial development to either purchase the land or use city land, build the building, and then put the fixtures in and bring it all up to modern technology with all the things that were thrown in there, that's the neighborhood of 30 to 40 million. That was what was floated out there. No, it wasn't. That's not true. Well, we could sit here and argue this from here to Sunday, but even if you want to say it was a 20 million, we don't have the 20 million to do that either. It was to say that we're going to get it from a private or a public donation um, as evidenced by the Library Foundation, they've done a great job, but 90000 is a far cry. You don't have the other investors coming through. And a sales tax is just, it's not something we were committed to do. Okay, so then my next question would be is what are we doing to go for those par public-private partnerships? If I'm not mistaken, Julie Denville and Joe Mangimelli did approach Bell University. They also approached Randy Schmazel, who's president of Bellevue Metropolitan Community College. Now, again, no commitments. Now, I also know, because we're talking about renovating the current library, back then the discussion was that was already taken off the table because it could only expand so much and only go up so high. We already knew that information, but we wasted time delving into it. And so I just, I guess my concern is, is what are we doing? Saving money and making a library. I mean, we've, we've discussed it all here, so. Um, so. I, I, <laughs> by that logic, I mean, we'd be a broke city. So I, I commend all you guys for working hard on, a, uh, on an excellent plan. And I think the library is very excited and happy to get to it. So is there any other comments or questions? Councilwoman Walsh. Yeah, and just regarding the feasibility study, my understanding with those studies is to see what do the people feel that we need? What needs to happen in the library? And they pick out possibly the best locations. But that's to figure out what the people need because we could have went in and just built a building or renovated the current one and said, we don't care about your input. It was to discover what does the citizens of Bellevue, what are they saying that they need in a library so that we are on target with making sure that that gets provided. So that study was put out there for good information for us to come back. Doesn't mean that we take everything that is said, because I think the thought, Mr. Risto, was if we did everything in the feasibility study, that's where the multi-million dollar building came from with doing everything that the feasibility study said. That's not true, it's not true. And I'm gonna tell you why, because it only looked at sites. We did not get into phase two for conceptual design. It was going to be around 15 to 20, but that was only an estimation. 
It does not say that in the feasibility study. The other thing is, is <clears throat> as we would have moved into that, we could have shed off costs if we thought things were unnecessary. And then if we would have explored public-private partnerships, would we be getting more bang for our buck? Would we not have to settle on renovating a building that is tucked away? I have the hardest time trying to explain where the Bellevue Professional Center is. Again, I support a library, but I support a brand new one because I think that's what the city of Bellevue deserves. Enough of the just doing things or the hole in the wall projects. And I think that this is one of those. Are we just doing something to do something? Or are we doing something so we have civic pride? Excuse me, I think we're getting into uh, campaigning uh, I think tidbits here. So I think, you know, we've, uh, we've moved beyond the discussion. So if you don't have any further input, Fine. any other comments, questions? Okay, we have a motion by Stenson, seconded by McCaw to approve 16I, uh, please vote. We have five yes votes, one no vote with Mr. Burns voting no. Item uh, 16J, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal agreement for the expansion of the Uni unified uh, Sarpy Sewer Waste and amendment to the agency's jurisdiction with Bellevue's extraterritorial jurisdiction. A motion. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16J. Second. Motion by Welch, seconded by McCaw. Any comments or questions? Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. Just and maybe to ask the question, well, why are we adding this? And I, I would think it's south of Fairview, or is it what, what area? I couldn't really tell on the map. South of Platteview and uh, pretty much anything east of 54th? Yes. Okay. So it's mostly the Highway 34 corridor. Where we catching all of that additional area that someday we may annex in so this way we're covered yep. okay. instead of building our own pioneer line in there separate than the wastewater system right that's what i thought but i couldn't really see where it was extending yep. thank you <coughs> any other comments or questions motion by welch seconded by mccaw please vote all voting yes motion carries Thank you. Item 17, administration reports. Uh, comments must be limited items on the current reports. And I think these reports, uh, since it's a second meeting, will be moved to the next first meeting week. of next month. So unless there's any discussion on past reports. OK, we'll put those uh, in the record when we get them. No closed session this evening. Takes us to adjournment. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Motion by Welch, seconded by Preister. Please vote. All voting yes. Motion carries.